Hello world, it is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, and looking out the window at Defiance, it's trying to be a nice day. Cool last night, and I don't think it's going to be all too warm today, maybe around 70 as a high, but um, looking like it might be a rather nice day. The devotion is entitled this today, uh, Love and Wonder by Rachel Hackenberg. And Rachel bases the devotion upon Psalm 94, adapted from verses 8 through 11, New Revised Standard Version. Understand, O dullest of people, fools, when will you be wise? The one who planted the ear also hears, the one who formed the eye also sees, the one who teaches knowledge to humankind also chastises. That same one knows our thoughts, which are but an empty breath. And Rachel's devotion. This past weekend, I watched Marvel Studios' newest feature film, Thor, Love and Thunder. First and foremost, I'd like to register a complaint that Marvel movies often, too often make me cry. It's embarrassing, especially when so many other aspects of this particular film were laughable. Second, and more to the point, I appreciate the capacity <clears throat> of sup superhero movies to play creatively with real theological questions. And Thor, Love and Thunder, plays with one of the best, most wrenching of theological questions. How do we make sense of a loving God when the world is overrun with agony and evil? What do we do when the gods disappoint us? The answer that the psalmist brings to this question might not be very pastoral. Wise up, you dull people. But I find it helpful all the same. Do we want to know why there is agony and terror? Perhaps we should watch, listen, and pay careful attention, rather than believing ourselves wise just because our thoughts swirl rapidly like empty dust devils. Do we want to know what to do when God disappoints us? <clears throat> Perhaps we should reapply what we have learned, relearn wisdom where knowledge has escaped us, and repent where we have erred. Do we want to understand holy love in the midst of evil? Perhaps we should practice wandering humbly, lest we be dulled to the world and listless to wisdom. And Rachel's prayer. How desperately I want your attention, O God, and how unceasingly you demand mine. Amen. A couple things that come to mind to me in this devotion is sometimes we're so busy searching for God that we're uh, we forget that we are perhaps God's living presence on earth. And when there is evil and horrible things happening all around us, it's an opportunity for us to step up and try to be the change that we wish to see in the world. Um, I think too often we might look for uh, divine intervention when in fact uh, we are the intervention that God desires. And it's up to us to do something. Um, <clears throat> and also sometimes I think we can get caught up in evil um, because we lose sight of God and, and God's attention or attending to God, I should say, uh, paying attention to God, which um, Rachel, I think, covers fairly well in her closing prayer. How desperately I want your attention, O God, and how unceasingly you demand mine. Keeping God focused in our lives <clears throat> at the heart of all we do and say and act and be in the world um, can make help this world can help make this world a better place. Um, doesn't mean that we won't occasionally fail or fall short or not do what we should do or do things that we don't really want to do, um, but know that we are forgiven and refocus again on God and continuing to be God's hands and feet in the world. And we can make this world a better place. Hope you have a good day and hope you can enjoy this cool weather. There's a little more heat coming on later in the week. So enjoy this while you can and um, I'll talk to you soon.